Okay, well this is the Scooby Copter Plus. This is one of the best puzzles in existence at the moment, I reckon. And part of it is because there's no overhang bandaging. The other reason is that this puzzle is can be used as a number of other puzzles. So you can use it as a Curvy Copter, as a Curvy Copter Plus, and that's a massive factor because the, the Curvy Copter Plus that's been released does have overhang bandaging, really frustrating. So this puzzle is fantastic. Now when it's in this scrambled state, the first thing and the main part, the main tricky part of this solve is getting it back into complete cube shape. So that's where I'm going to start. What I'm looking for initially is, what I'm trying to do is these bits here need to look like this, which is our standard sort of edge configuration. These ones are not. So I'm trying initially to see if I can make a line. What I want is a line through here if possible. Now you might think, well, I've just set it up so there's a line. Well, actually there comes a point where you can't really scramble it much more and there's you're only going to be one, maybe two turns away from getting a line like this anyway. So this is where I'm starting. And what I'm trying to do is, the reason I want a line there is so that I can actually turn like that. So one of the skewed axis turns. And I want to get these pieces pointing the same way. So you can see both of these sort of point upwards. Both of these point upwards, they point upwards, this one points downwards. So at the moment, let's just concentrate uh, on these two here. These two both point upwards. So I want to turn that, turn one of them up to the, the other one, then try and do a 180 turn. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes you'll have to clear things out before that, and then turn it back down. And the trouble I'm having here is not this puzzle, it's the fact that some other bits, it, it turns so well, these scooby, uh, curvy copter parts turn so well that sometimes they turn back where they shouldn't be. Now, I think it was these two, they have now become correctly configured. What about, I've got this one here, I've got a couple here, one, they're both pointing downwards, so I can turn this to there, turn this 180 degrees, and then return it, and we'll find that those are now in the correct configuration. Now when I do this and I'm down to say one more and it's actually only one on this line, it means I've got to try and find another line. So I'm kind of turning it around looking for a different axis somewhere. Uh, what's Where's another one? And this is going to sound a little bit non-scientific or a bit arty but I'm also considering the structure of the puzzle. So I'm looking at the main overall structure and I like what I see here. So I've got edge, 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 edge where they basically should be. This one needs to be configured correctly, but it's still where it should be. So I might just consider looking at the other edges. Where should that be? That's definitely there. That's there. That's there. This one can be turned around. That's good. And you can see that I've actually got the basic structure of the thing done. And now it shows that there's actually only two of these things left. One there and one over here. So I've got to see if I can get them onto the same line. I may not be able to. So first thing I will try, get that pointing towards this one. This is looking good. If I couldn't do that, then I'd need to go and perhaps do this one on a line through here to fix this one, put this one wrong, and then use this one through here. That's the sort of thing I would be doing. But at this stage, it looks like they can both be on the same line. So I'm going to just point them both upwards. That's up, that's up. This time I've got to turn through two parts. I'll just check that everything else is aligned. It looks good. There we go. That is turning. One. Hang on, which was it? I've got to go up to here. You can see how easy it is for these bits to move. That's a good thing, but it does cause a couple of problems here. One, two. Okay. Turn this around. Back two. If I can do it, uh, one, one more, there we go. And what I should find now is that all my edges are correctly configured. And from here, I just want to try and get them all facing the correct way. There we go. That's pretty good. Now, the thing that you might find, you might have a situation where, for example, you've got this sort of thing and you can see the basic structure is done. However, it looks like three of the other edges are kind of wrong. They just look wrong. And what's happened there is it's been, one of the axes has been turned one turn. And so if I looked 
as an example of this, I'll hold it this way and I can see the, the bottom ones are okay, this is okay, this is okay, this is okay, but then I should really have, I shouldn't really have this edge here. It just looks like it's out. And so what I would do then is to say, oh, well, it probably needs to be turned one turn. When I do that, I should find that the structure has returned. You'll know what I mean if you come across it. Okay, so from this point, we've got the structure done. That's great, and that's it's not really much harder than that. Um, we now want to go about flattening these pieces that are sticking out. And this is just sort of like a Kirby Copter routine. And I'm going to be sort of flattening and placing these corners at the same time. So let me just find one. Here we go. So what I want is one that's sort of sticking outwards, so this way, one that's sticking towards the front, that kind of thing. Because what is going to happen then? The one that's turning outwards, I can turn up into the copter part, then turn the copter part 180, and then return this. And what if I just undo that and do it again, we'll have a look where those pieces were. One sticking out here, the red green and the white blue. So let's see what happens to them. Okay, there's the white blue, that's now flat where it should be. The red green is here and that is also flat where it should be. So that's exactly the kind of thing that we're looking to make happen. I would keep searching, there's another one. Do I have another couple that are sticking out? I do have one over here, so I'm going to try and move this one over to the same sort of position. Now these are on the same orbit, so that's no good at the moment. So what I'll do here is turn this around, turn this around, so does that work? No, so I'm going to um, try the other way. I'm going to turn this over to here and then turn this. No, so I'm still not happy with that. So for now, let's have a think. Uh, that's where it was. I don't think I'm going to get any joy here, just continuing to do this. So I'll show you what I would do. I would say to this, well, I need to get this on a different orbit. And so to get it on a different orbit, I want this one over here or here. Ideally, I'd like it here. So let's go and place it there. So I'll just do a little kind of edge piece series where I'm just doing one turn here and this little turn down here, then undo those moves. Okay. Now, did I make that happen? I've got no idea. I actually put that in its place, so that didn't help. However, however, I do have one here that I think will work well. There we go. I've now got this one sticking out. I've got this one over here, so I'm, the one that's sticking out, I turn up into the copter position, do a 180, put down. Let's just see. I think I should have one sticking out somewhere. Hmm, maybe not. Maybe that was the one that I did. Okay, now at this point, what I like to do is get a few of these corners into their corner positions. At the moment, they're in these sort of triangle positions. I don't like that. So what I want to do to get the corner in the corner position, and this is where the fact that there is no overhang bandaging is fantastic, is hold it here on the upper left, on the left face in the upper um, it's actually the upper right position on the left face, like this. And down here on the front face in the lower right position, I want there to be a triangle. doesn't matter which one. So that's set up. What I want to do is turn the corner like that, put it onto this copter. I want to then turn that copter turn 180 degrees. Now you can see the corner and the triangle can just be swapped like that. And I bring my copter turn back and return this. So that corner was there, it's now there. I did have a triangle down here, it's now over here. So that's cool. And that just helps me to get it to a much nicer shape, I feel, to be working with. So I'm going to do a couple of them. Um, don't actually have to turn that back, I can just turn that around. That's done. What about this corner? Yep, there's a triangle down there. Now, I should stress this is not essential. You can still do 
You can still work your way through without getting all these corners flattened. I just really prefer doing it. And I guess it's also going to give hints as to how I'm going to deal with the triangles later on. Uh, looks like only a couple left at the moment, so let's get them done. This one over here, I'll just put a triangle into its position. Good. Now, you can see that there's no more corners sticking out. So I'm now in a position to see a lot better what's going on. Now I've got a whole bunch of these pieces which look kind of like they're just wrongly sticking up. Some like this where they're sticking up and some like this where both of them are pointing downwards into the puzzle, if you like. Or at least one's flat and the other one's pointing downwards. What I'm trying to do is get pieces like this onto the same orbit. So there's one and I want them two apart. So I'm actually going to got so many on this orbit that's actually kind of good so there's one there one there one there that'll do for now and then what I do is just turn two turns and just have a look at what's happened there you go I've made one of these which I'm trying to make this is a, a pair that's joined together that's also sticking out I'm going to turn it another two turns and just see if I can end up making two I can't so I'll just leave it like that there's one there now I'll turn to a different axis and try the same thing because at the moment what I'm looking for is just to make another two of these sort of pieces. That got me none, so I'll turn it again. And now I've got one here on that axis. So I'm trying to make two so that I can go and flatten them down. So I've got this one and this one now. now let's try and turn that up. Here we go. Good. So this one's now sticking out. This one's sticking up. So I turn this onto the copter. Turn it 180, got that aligned. And turn it back. And what you'll notice is that it does definitely flatten those pieces, but it also sticks a corner out. So personally, I like to take care of them straight away and just get them dealt with at the time. It just gets so quick that you don't even think about it. Uh, this one here. Now, obviously I'm going a lot slower here in this video than I would normally go because I'm trying to have some semblance of holding the thing still um, but also explain stuff. Alright, so that's good. I'm going to do this again on this. There we go. One there, one there and I'll just turn this around so it's separated by two. Let's now Give that two turns, see what's happened. I've got one done. I'll leave that for now and go to a different orbit. Try this one here. Come on. Yeah, there it is, there's the problem. Okay. Good, got another one here, got one here. Let's see what we can do. Perfect, one sticking out, so that's going to go up to there, turn, come back, and you can see again I've created some corners. Let's, let's leave them for now. I've got one here. Do I have a... So on this one I've got uh, one of these larger ones, or larger pairs, but I don't have a smaller pair. What have I got over on this orbit? Uh, no smaller pairs there. Here I've got a smaller pair, and a smaller pair, and a smaller pair, and a larger pair. So I'll at least turn this to create one of these things. Now I've got a couple of smaller pairs here. Now I need to get those smaller pairs onto this orbit which has three larger pairs. Is it three or four? Yeah, three. Three larger pairs. So in other words, I want them on here. And this one is currently here, so I'd like to move it over to that orbit. So how do I do that? Just like I did before, turn, turn, undo, undo. And you can see that that small one is now on that orbit. So I'm going to just quickly, it's also put some corners out, that's okay. I'm going to quickly just join that if I can. 
can see what that's left me with. Yep, there's one sticking out there. There's one there. I've got one here. So let's see if I can just flatten a couple of these for now. I can. Now, do I have one more or two more? Definitely one there. I can only see one more. So let's see where we are. That orbit's only got small ones. Um, this, that's only got that one. This one here only has the big ones. So once again, I'll have to take one of the small pairs. If I can just find one of them. There we go. You can see that I want this small pair to be here on that same orbit as this large pair. So again, I'll just move it across. Like so, that small pair is now there. If I turn that around, it's two away from this, so I should now be able to turn that face along. Let's see what that's created, if anything. Nothing yet, so I'll turn it again. It's created one there. That's good. So I've got one, which should go with this other one. And they are positioned very nicely. So turn that one onto the copter. 180 twist, turn it back. Now at this stage again for me, I've got a bucket load of um, corners that I'd like to place. So I'll just quickly go through and flatten them. Because flattening these corners is not actually changing any of the edge parts that I've been trying to change. All it's really doing is swapping a corner and a triangle. And you'll see that as the cube gets more and more into cube shape, it becomes much easier to turn. And so these copter parts, they're not as bad as a, um, like a Fisher cube, where those things were so smooth that they just turned beyond what you wanted them to turn. But it's not that far off. So I think it's a really good mix. It's a good, um, a good amount of turnage that you've got here. Right, those corners are down. What have I got? One here. I've only got that one, so now I note that I'm hopefully looking for another couple. There's a small pair, there's a large pair. They need to be on the same orbit. I think that might be the only ones left. I can't see any others at the moment, so I'm gonna get them together. So I'm gonna move this to that orbit there. Like so, I'll join those together. Lovely. So I've got that one and this one. Let's just go ahead and place them. Or flatten them, I should say. Okay, I'd also like now to get the corners dealt with. Got another corner up here. Um, so that is to go there. All right, all those corners are down. What have I got left? I've got one here. Do I have any more? What you're hoping for is that you end up with two left to deal with. I'm actually really happy that I've only got one here left to deal with. I didn't think it would happen because it doesn't happen that often, but it is something that you will encounter. So the question is, how do we deal with this? I've got to create a second one somehow. So what I want to do is just leave this here for a little bit and then just move up somewhere else on the puzzle and just maybe two up here. And what I'm going to need to do is create a second piece. So a second piece that's sticking up. So the first thing is just to grab this and turn it one turn so the, the whole cube is a bit skew if like that. Now I would like to flip this piece around. So the orange is here, the green is here because that's not gonna change that piece at all if I turn that around. When I turn it back, I'm still gonna have a large piece which will come back like that. I would also at the same time, because I can't really flip one at a time, I can flip two at a time. So I'd also like to say flip this one here because then the orange will be here, the blue will be here, it'll be sticking out, which is exactly what I want to create that second piece. So to flip it, what I wanna do is do 
just take this bit out to here using an edge piece series and then put it back in but turn its position off first turn it down onto its position undo those moves and when I turn the cube back you'll see that orange piece has actually gone back to create a nice flat piece there everything else is flat but I now have one more piece sticking out there which I can now use to deal with this one so you can see that this piece is not on the correct orbit so I'm going to get it onto the correct orbit first in the usual fashion and you'll notice um, in fact, did that put it on the correct orbit? No, it didn't seem to. So, uh, where do I want it? Let's try um, getting it. Is that going to work? That's not going to work. So I'm going to have to put this in backwards. So turn it down like that. There we go, like so. Now that is now where I want it on this correct orbit. Now you might say, well, hang on, more pieces have come out. Yes, but there's two of them. And that's what I need to finish this off. So um, I can now basically go, I've got a couple here. Let's just try and deal with one of these at a time. I'll put that over there. Yep, I've got this one sticking out. I've got this one sticking up. So that one will go onto the copter, spin around, come back. Now I should have just that one and this one here. These are on the same orbits again. So I'm just going to need to change which orbit that one is on. I'll just move it. Um, Let's perhaps put it over to that orbit. Uh, does that help me? I think it does. Let me just firstly, I'll firstly deal with that and that. There we go. And just this one here. Now that is on a different orbit, which is good what I want and now I'm in business so I've got last twist to do and you can see the only thing left sticking up now apart from these little triangles which I haven't even talked about yet are the corners so I'm just going to go and deal with the corners in the same way that I have been flatten them all down Got another one over here. And this one's over here. Where's the... Oh, I've got to move this over to the position that it should be in. You can see how easy it is getting to turn it now. They just sort of spin around really nicely. Okay, so now what I've got is all of the edge parts. I don't know even what you call these parts. These are triangles. Maybe they're bits of the petal. I don't know. They're all flattened. My corners are all flattened. I've just got these triangles which need to be flattened. Now to flatten the triangles is actually pretty straightforward as well. Um, it's just a little bit tedious. And I have thought about flattening and placing the triangles at the same time, but no, you can do it if you want. So this red one, let's have a look. I used to agonize over, is this twisted clockwise or anti-clockwise? I have no idea. I still have no idea looking at that. I cannot tell. So what I've found is that if I move that triangle into this upper position here like that I can clearly see just looking at that that it is angling down this way that means it's going around like that to me it's going like that and so when I turn it down to the bottom here I've got to move it in an anti-clockwise direction around the bottom face so I just turn it around the bottom face and put it back up and what you'll see is that it is now flat against that. So basically if it's angling downwards to the left I move it to my eyes left around the bottom face. I'm just going to put, hang on, and put this back correctly. There we go. Let's try another one, this, this second red one here. I'm going to move it up to that position. This time it's angling down towards the right. At least there's a larger gap on the right. So what I see is I turn this down to the bottom face and move it around the bottom face, rightwards or clockwise. When I bring it back up, it's sitting nice and flush. Now I'm not going to show all of them, that's all you have to do, I'm just going to do the rest of them and cut back in later. 
All right, well, they're all done now. And that doesn't take that long once you're just doing them on your own, getting them done quickly. And you can see that the cube is back to perfectly cube shape. There's nothing sticking out. And now we're ready to start placing things. We're ready to start reducing this to a curvy copter. That's essentially what we're gonna do. Now, the first thing that I wanna do to avoid problems later on is get the corners into position and oriented correctly, or at least check that they're oriented. So I'm gonna just start with this white, green, red. I'm gonna find uh, another, that white, red one has gotta go over here. And I like to get them so that they're all oriented correctly on the white face. So this is not, needs to be turned up like that. I really can't remember which way I've got to go around the bottom face now. I'm tempted to think it's the same as um, the other one, but clearly that was wrong. Or maybe you've got to do it twice. I don't know. I never know. I just keep going until it's done. The next one will be a white, blue, orange. Um, let's try going around the bottom face clockwise here. No, I think you've got to do it twice either way. I just don't know enough about this. And the white, green, orange. Let's try going the other way. Nah, I reckon it's twice whatever you do. Okay, those whites are all in position. Now I'm gonna just put the yellows into position in their correct places. So the orange, blue going here, blue, red there, red, green has to go over here. Now what I wanna do now, I know the whites are all good. I wanna check the orientation of the yellows. That one's good. Anti-clockwise, this is what it needs to turn, anti-clockwise clockwise and this one is clockwise now there'd be two scenarios which i'd be happy with one would be that all three of them have to turn the same direction the other would be that i had this anti-clockwise this clockwise and this was correct but it's clearly not so in order to get this right now all i need to do is think well that if that turns anti-clockwise this turns clockwise they'd be okay it's just this one here that's out that really should be here so this one really needs to turn clockwise. So what I do is just that corner, I do a skewed turn to turn that corner clockwise, like so. What I know now is that I've absolutely fixed exactly the corners. They will come out really nicely at the end. There won't be any surprises of a single twisted corner or things like that. And I don't need to worry about should I start building my white edges where my white corners were my whites were down here no I shouldn't it doesn't matter as long as the corners are good you can start building them anywhere so I might start building my white blue here so I'm now thinking and again this the next few parts of this solve I'm not going to go through the whole thing I'm going to show you how to do it and then skip through to the last couple because it's it's not that it's tedious this is still a really fun solve it's just you don't need to see the whole lot okay so if this is the white blue I need to find the other white blue first of all. It's over here and what I'm looking for is two edges away, as in on the same axis, one, two, like that. And there it is. Essentially what I'm gonna do here is the following. I want, if that white blue is on sort of the left side of these two, I'm gonna be turning that up to here and I wanna push out that white blue. Turn it up, push it out, turn the cop to turn, return it back. Now you'll see that not only has it now placed the two white blues, but I did a skew turn up, which put the corners out. Then I did a skew turn back, which put the corners back. So every time I do this, it's keeping the corners exactly where they should be. So that's my white blues done. Now I've got to go and place the other ones in their correct position. So I know from the corners, and if I forget, I just look and say, well, this is a white on the top, blue on the left, orange on the right. So if that's white blue, this needs to be white orange. I've already got a white orange here. Now here's my second white orange. Now what I need to do is always be two, two away. So I want it either here or over here. And I can see that I can get that white orange over to that position to start with. So I just turn it a little bit, turn it over with a skew turn, do a copter turn, turn it back. And now that white orange is two away from where it should be. And it's on the left side here. It's going to push out this white orange. So I do that, do the copter turn, return. And you can see the white oranges are done. Now what I tend to do is build up 
the white edges and then I start just doing these other ones. So I'm going to just, maybe I'll do one more here, one more pair and then cut back in later. So if that's white, blue, white, orange, this must be white, green. There's a white, green there and there's a white, green there. Both quite unhelpful. So I would look at this white, green and say if I can get it to that position, that is then ready to put up. So that's what I'll do. Move the white, green down, undo the skew turn. Now it's in the correct position so I can move it up to where it should be. Bring it back. I've got the same problem with this white green so I'm going to move this white green over to here. Again as long as you do a skew turn and undo the skew turn it's always going to be fine. This white green's on the right so I'll just turn the position of the same white green so I'm pushing it out doing a turn, bringing it back. This should remind you a lot of placing centers in something like the 5x5 five five cube. Anyway, you can see I've got white, blue, white, orange. I don't care whether it's white, orange or orange, white. I just care that they're in their correct position. So I'll continue doing that, cut back in a little bit later. All right, well, I've got all the white ones done and I do like to have, at this stage, I like to have them all facing the same way and all of these just to help my orientation with the yellow ones. So I can see that a yellow blue is in there, but I, I've got to put this yellow blue over to here. So what I'm going to do is just find somewhere that's two away from both of them, which happens to be this one. So I can move that yellow blue down there and just temporarily displace the orange green. And then put the yellow blue into where it should be, so it's on the right. And then bring that orange green back by turning the other piece up, putting the orange green on and turning it back. So that's got the yellow blues in and you can see that's still where it should be. I need a yellow orange that's got to come from there over to here. So this yellow orange, if I want to go somewhere that's two away from both, it's going to have to be this one. So that yellow orange can temporary, temporarily displace the white green. Uh, that's now ready to place into its position. And then we put the white green back. Like so. What's next? Uh, yeah, the yellow blues are done, yellow oranges. That's yellow red. So I've just got to swap this yellow green and the yellow red here. So again, somewhere that's two away is going to be this one here. One, two one two like that so I want to bring the which one the yellow green over to here first go and put it where it should be and then return the blue orange which will also return the yellow red to where it should be and you can see now that if you get everything oriented correctly that all your edges are done. They all match, they all look like they should go. Now we haven't reduced the edges yet but we've definitely got them into position and we know that our corners are all good as well. Okay so the next part of this solve is to make is to reduce these edges. So I'm going to reduce the edges as follows. I actually like to look for an undone edge where one color needs to roll over to the other color. I'm going to find one if I can. Here we go. This is, um, I'll see if I can do better because that's going to be potentially a little bit confusing. No, nah, I'm going to stick with that one if I can find it. Okay, so the yellow has got to roll to that yellow. So my piece movement for this algorithm is going to be here to here. It's also going to take one from either of these two back positions. It doesn't matter which one. And so what I'm looking for in order to make a complete reduced edge, if that yellow rolls to there, that'll be good. I want to get a red somewhere here so that it can go and place in this position. So I'll just first look and see if there's any reds around. There aren't. I then have a look here and notice that anything in these positions here or here can easily be put to that back position. So in this case I've got a red here which can be moved because it's not already done. So I'm just going to do a, a skewed turn to put that red in that back right position and I'll undo everything at the end because I'll know that I'll need to because my edge pieces will be out. 
So that red is now in that back position. Now, if it's over on the right, then what I'm doing, I'm always turning that red piece up to here first. If it was on there, I would turn down like that first, but it's on the right, so I'm actually gonna do down, down, up, apologize for this, up, okay. Now you can see that that red piece has now correctly positioned itself in here. What I wanna do now is do one copter turn of that piece and then undo those moves. So because the first turn that I did was from here and it came down that way, to undo them, I've gotta do the one that comes down this way. And you might've just noticed that's a yellow that's gonna come in place in here. So down, down, up, up. Now for completeness and because it's also good practice if you do a few setups, I'll do that turn as well. You can see that has now been completely reduced. Let's just grab this edge. You remember I had to turn that there for a setup, put it back, check that the edges are all correctly colored. They are. You can see that that edge has now been completely reduced. That's all I'm doing. So I would, I'll do one or two more here and then cut through to the end again. Sometimes it's not obvious and I can't find anything, but here I've got a good one. So this yellow needs to roll to there. That's good. So I'm now looking for a green piece to be back here somewhere. There's no green obvious piece there. There's no obvious piece here. The other place that I can look for them is at the back. So you remember, here's my front piece that I'm looking at. Ideally, I want these two here, but if not, I'll grab one from here. And here's how I do it. I want this green to be around to that orange position. So what I'm going to do is rotate using a skew turn anti-clockwise. There we go. And that green piece is now in that back position the same as before. And so the green is gonna come down to here, the yellow is gonna go there, that blue is gonna go back to that position there. Okay, so we'll carry that out. So down, down, up, up, 180 twist, and then undo, come from the other direction. Give it a 180 twist for completeness. Come back down here and just fix up what happened. Now this time the edges look fine, but then if we look over here, they're not. That's because I move this from here. So I've got to move it back to there. I can just see that if I do that turn, it's also going to get all these edges back where they should be. And which one was it that I just did? I think it was, it wasn't the yellow red. It was something. There's definitely a second one. I think it might've been that one, the green yellow. All right, so that's essentially all I'm doing. And the setups actually don't get really any harder than that. So normally you'll just be able to find what you want. I'll just see if there's another one that's obvious. If it's not, I'll show you what I would do. I actually can't see anywhere. I've got one that just wants to roll over. So I would then look for a piece that's partially done. For example, this one, this is partially done. I know that if I can get an orange piece to come back to here, if this is on the back, then that'll complete that one. So I have a quick look and say, is there an orange there? No, there's not. What if it was on the other side? There's no orange there either. So let's try a different one quickly. So I'm just now looking for any that have one done, like this one here. Okay, that needs a white. Is there a white there? No, no. The next thing I would look at, if I can't easily find, oh, here's another one. Or did I just do that one? Can't remember. Um, if I can't easily find, what about this one? Orange. Because I almost always can find what I want. So orange, orange, orange. Ah, here we go, this is a good one. Okay, so this I want an orange piece to go there, which means I've got to have an orange piece up in this position. Now I notice down here, there's a couple of orange pieces. So I can happily just turn a skew turn to put that orange piece up into that position, like that. Now, I didn't plan this, but you'll notice that that particular orange piece is on a green base. And so when I turn that up, this green piece is gonna go down and place into that green base as well, which is good. 
So I've done that skew turn for a setup. Now this time my yellow piece, which is here, is on the left. I'm really interested in that orange coming back to there to complete that edge. So, because it's on the left, my first turn brings that piece down. So it's a down, down, up, up again. Turn the copter turn, and then undo. All right, you can see that orange piece is now in there. It's completed that edge. Now I've just got to undo the turn that I did, which I think was this one, but I can tell for sure because all of the edges will come back, so that's not the correct one. Um, do you know why it's not the correct one? Because I did not do that turn. That's why I said before, it's, it's actually good practice to just complete the turn every time. Now when I turn it back, it is the correct edge. So I'm going to just continue doing them. I'll cut back with the last two or three at the end. All right, down to six to go, six little pieces, and I've got it so that I've got this one here with the blue going to there. Now what I'd like is a yellow piece. So I see that the yellow piece is up the back here, and even better, that orange is going to go fill in that as well. So I'll get that done first of all. No setups required. And I should just say the turning here is not the puzzle, it's my bad alignment. It's actually quite difficult to get it properly aligned while keeping the cube relatively still. I know it's not perfectly still, but it's not the puzzle. Okay, that's done. That's done. Now I've got three left. I've got one here. Where's the other ones? I've got the green here. I've got a blue here and I've got, I can find the other one, the white down there. So that white, let's have a look where that, if that is close to anything that is. I've got a white here and I've got the blue here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, I'd like to fill in this white and I'll do it by bringing this white up to there. And I know it's gonna knock out the orange, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna make them bits at a time. It's actually much easier to do this maybe do it in two or three steps than it is to try and do setups, do the whole lot in one step, and then you find you've got no idea what your setups were. Okay, so that white's done. So there's that one and that one. I've got another one now. I'm pretty sure there's another one somewhere. Those two, where's the other one? Oh, my goodness, right in front of me. Okay, so I've got the, the orange that needs to go there, the blue that needs to go there, the green that needs to come here. So the question is, can I just get this over to this position? And you'll be saying, well, of course I can. I can just turn it like that, but of course it knocks out this thing here. So that's no good yet. What, I'm, what I might do is have a look at moving this green up to that position. Because if I can do that, then it will be correctly aligned with this and it won't knock anything out. So that's that's my plan. This is my, gonna be my front piece and I can just turn that around, no problem like that. This green, can I move it? I actually don't know if I can move it to where I want it. I'd like to, oh yes, I, th I think I can. I'd like to put it there. That's gonna be the place where it needs to go. So let us try moving it there first and just see what that's done. It has actually put it, by the looks of it, exactly in the right position. I've just got to check that I... Yeah, that's perfect. So that's only really one setup move that I've got to remember. Everything's now in position. So I carry out the regular routine. You can see that green's been placed. Definitely do the final cop to turn there. Now I've just got to look and say what had to happen. I think this had to go back there. Lovely. Okay. And what you'll see is that not only are all the edges in position and correctly colored again, but they are now all reduced. And so if I was to turn them all around, 
you would find that you can see all the edges are, are there. They're all reduced, ready to go. Now, that being done, the next stage, and you can, it doesn't actually matter which, which sort of order you do these in. You can do these little triangles next, or you can do these bits next. I might do these bits next, and then just show you how to deal with the triangles at the end, which you've probably already figured out. But these bits here, um, what I'm looking for is if that's a yellow large, I've got a large and a small here that I'm trying to match together. I'm looking on the same orbit for a yellow small somewhere. There we go, I've found one right here. And all I care about is that it is two away. So what I mean by two is that's one, that's two. And the reason for that is so that it keeps the cube shape. So I want this to be two away from there. Now what I'm gonna do is turn it so it's like that then I'm going to take this out and replace it with something else that's not done, like that bit there is not done. What I'm thinking is, I'd like to replace it with a piece that has the small part that's going to turn back and correctly position with this large green part. So the three pieces that are involved are this piece, this piece, and one of these. And you'll notice there that I do happen to have a small green. So that small green will go back and place with that. So I can get two of these done at once. So here's what I do. Turn it on. Now I want this to go to there. I don't want these pieces to jut up. So what I'm going to do is turn this position off. Put my green piece on undo those moves. Now technically that's where I just need to stop but I always do this fourth one for completion. I'm then going to turn the skew turn back two turns to where it was and then undo those moves. Now all I need to remember is the green piece was down here so I turned this up first so if I want to undo those moves to do that I'm going to be turning that like that. And you can kind of always tell because what you're doing is turning one triangle onto this piece or up to that position and then the other triangle turns on. And if you do that you'll get it back to completely flat. Now what we notice here is that that yellow piece has now been reduced. That green piece has also been reduced. It also appears that that red piece has been reduced. So I don't know if I magically got three done there but that's ideal. And you can see that is what we're aiming for. It's pretty straightforward. I'm just going to do one more here. Um, we've got, a, here we go. We've got a white small attaching to a white large. Now I've got a green over here. So I would look to see, do I have a green? I do actually have a green. And here's the beauty of this. If I didn't have that there, let's say that it was all the way over here. What I can do when I'm searching for a green is I can go, look anywhere down this orbit to see if I can find one. If I can't find one there, I'll just travel along this orbit and I'll say, hey, wait, there's a green. So I move that back up into the position that it needs to be in and it can be here or here, it doesn't matter. So now I'm ready to do that same thing again. Bring the white along to reduce that, replace it with this piece. Turn it back undo those moves, done. And you can see the white's done, the green's done. That's all we're doing. So I'll continue to do that and come back in later. Okay, well I'm down to the last four or five and the problem that I have now is that they're not on the same orbits where they need to be. So you remember I needed the two pieces to be on the same orbit. As an example, um, I've got this yellow blue here and I look along that orbit and I can see no other yellow blues that need to be done. That's the original piece. So I need to find something with a yellow base and put it on the same orbit. Or a blue top. So for example this blue top I would like to go on the same orbit as this piece. How do I get it there? Well I know that I can always swap right to left anytime I like. So would that do it? Yes it would. So I'm just going to swap those two with the standard jumbling move found on a helicopter cube or a curvy copter, whatever. Now that that blue piece is there, I'm ready to bring it up here and I'd just like to get a third piece in this position. At this stage, I don't really care what the third piece is. If I could get a yellow base, great. Let's see if there's anything on this orbit. 
there is something on this orbit. There's a white red, so I'm just going to turn that up so that that is in position. So now I can bring my blue up there, replace it with my white red, return it and undo those moves. Okay, then I'll have a look and see what's next. I've got a yellow white. I can see there's a white piece that I would like to have, but I'll just check and see if there's any other. There's a yellow base. Okay, good. So I had a yellow base here. I've got my yellow top that can go to the yellow base and I need a third piece somewhere. So I'm just going to have a look and see if there's a third piece on one of these orbits. Not that one. Ah, there is a white red that looks to be down here as well. So I can bring that up to there. Now I've got yellow coming to there and there's my third piece ready to go. So I'll do this one. Okay, where are we up to now? I look along this orbit, there's no more pieces to do. There's an orange red here. What else have I got? I've got the orange red. Nothing on the top and an orange red. So I've actually only got the two pieces left. And they're both sort of the same color. Can I find the other one? There it is. Oh, they're even on the same orbit, which is great. So I'll put them ready and I think, well, that red has got to go up to here. Now what's coming back to this piece? An orange. And so I need an orange piece there. And you can see that it's going to work because this orange part here is going to go and place onto that one. So there's my red done. I'll replace it with the orange. Bring that back. Um, which way did I go? I think it was this way. Good. And you can see the red's done, the orange is done, and that orange down there is also done. And that's how you deal with those last few of those, I don't know what you'd call them, petal things. Now the last stage of the reduction is to place the little triangles. This is exceedingly simple. What we want to do is basically, hopefully, find a couple that want to swap. So this orange and white, and I've got a white orange, I want them in that position. So one's on this same part here, and one's on this upper right part of the upper face. And what I do, that's perfect because they're just going to swap perfectly. I bring that one turn 180 degrees. You remember before when I was just replacing corners that I just turned this back, but I don't want to do that now. I want to bring this white piece down and across. And you can see the reason for that is I can now spin that, swap the orange and the white. Now return everything that I did and the orange and the white have been successfully swapped and placed. Now you may not always be able to do that. So sometimes you're just going to say, well, I've got a green base here and a green triangle. I'll take that. So bring them down, put one underneath the other, do the swap, return everything and you're done. What's the complicated part here? Really nothing apart from potentially having to to move a couple of pieces in different orbits. And uh, maybe I'll just find one that is a direct swap that needs to be changed into orbits and I can show you what I mean. I've got a white blue there. Do I have a blue white anywhere? I do. Uh, these in different orbits. Good. These are actually in the same orbit and they need to be in different orbits if this is going to work. So I've got a white blue. Just say I'd like that blue white up to there. How do I get it there? Well, I look at where it could swap. This one could go and swap over to here, to that piece. Would that get it to the correct orbit? It would actually, it would actually do the job. So as long as it's next to the other one, it'll work. So I'm just going to swap that one, put it next to the other one, and like that. Now I can leave this one on the left, move this one up to here on the top. And you can see they're now swapped. And I can go ahead, do this. You can see it's really quick, really simple. 
and that's done. I'm just going to keep doing the rest of them until the whole puzzle is reduced to a Kirby copter. Alright, well all of those triangles have now been placed into their positions and that means the entire thing is now reduced to a Kirby copter. So this is the quick and easy part at least. I mean I remember when I first did a Kirby copter it seemed pretty difficult. It seems super easy now because I mean doing this it's much harder. So I'm going to whip through this. If you haven't done a Kirby copter you probably should try and solve one of them first. And of course you can do it with this puzzle just by not scrambling it as much. So with a Kirby copter I want to get the edges done and um, they're all correctly facing the right way. I want to get these white ones in if I can so I'm just going to always do two adjacent pieces turning. We'll, put, we'll move a white one there. I'm looking at where the orbit is, if they're in the correct orbit. Yes. This one's fine. What about some more whites? There's one there. Where's that going to go? Follow it up. That's already a piece in there, so that's in the wrong position. But I see that it should go there, and it's across here. So I can do a swap, a jumbling move to put that in. And the final one is here. It's in the wrong orbit. Um, that needs to be, let's have a look, I can swap it here but that's not going to get it into the correct orbit. If I move it to there, that'll put it over here which will get it into the correct orbit. So that's what you're thinking. You're always trying to see ahead to which orbit it's going to go into and go from there. And you can see now that it's in the correct orbit I can do that. Okay, so those parts there are placed. The next thing I want to do is place the corners. Um, I kind of don't really need to worry about the edges yet. So I'm just going to place the corners. So what do I do? Find a, a white, orange, blue. Turn it around to where it needs to go, which is above here. You can see that there it's not positioned. So the white needs to be on the top if it's going to go in. And so I'll just move it around the top face until it's differently oriented. Now this needs to go anti-clockwise. Let's do an experiment. I'm turning it clockwise around the face. So I think if it goes, if it needs to go anti-clockwise, you've got to turn it anti-clockwise around the face. Now I said we won't really worry about these yet, but we might as well. So you can see the orange is on the left. So what I would probably do is just flip that around so that it's correctly oriented. Like so. Now I've got the white blue, red, where's that? It's over here. Let's try my little technique. It's got to go anti-clockwise. Let's move it around the top face in an anti-clockwise fashion. Hey, that worked. There you go. Um, white, green, red, that's above it, but it's got to go clockwise. My goodness, I think I'm a genius. Now that's not like that. So we'll just flip it around, put it on correctly. And remember I said I was going really, really fast through this, so I wouldn't normally go this fast, but this is not the main point of the solve. I guess the main point is how do you get it to this point? Okay, so those are all in. Next thing I want to do is do these, I'm going to call them petals now. So I want to put an orange petal. I'm looking just up the orbit to see if there's one in that same orbit. There is, so I can turn it there. Now I turn the piece up. I don't want to just replace it because it'll knock out the corner. So I just turn the corner off out of the way, put the orange petal in, return the corner, put it back down. That's in. That's done. What a blue. No, there's no blue, so I'll leave that for the moment. There's a blue there. So I'll just put it up ready, turn it up, put the corner out the way, put the blue petal in, put the corner back, turn it down. Uh, this has got to be red, follow it up, no reds. This has got to be green, follow it up, no greens. There's a green, so we'll do that first of all. That's done. Now I think now I'm up to the point where I need to jumble some pieces across. So I need a blue to be in this orbit. So either there, which I could get from coming here, or there, which I could get from here. So you can see that I'm just thinking about where it has to be in order to get into the correct orbit. Now I've got that blue piece into the orbit. 
So bring the corner up, put it out of the way, put the piece in, put the corner back, turn it down. Red. Now I've got a red piece that's sort of jumbled itself into the correct position there, which is, often happens. And it looks like I've got one green to go. I need to get a green. Now, I need to get a green either to here, in which case it'd have to come from that position, or here, in which case it'd have to come from that position. And you can see there's no green there, but if it's got to come from that position, there is a green there, which can be turned into that position. So now that it's turned into that position, I can jumble it. And my green is in the correct orbit. Done. You can see the whole bottom half, including the edges, is solved. Now for the top half, what I want to do first is just turn the edges around so that they are correctly placed and then just have a look at what needs to be done. Um, I can see that if I've got a three cycle, that's great, but often I'll get a swap. So the blue and the orange need to swap. The yellow and the orange need to swap as well. So first thing I'm going to do is swap the blue and the orange into there. Now, if I'm going to swap that, the blue needs to go over here. So what I need to do is push these two out of the way. So push that one out of the way, push that one out of the way, so that when I turn the edge, you'll see the blue comes back onto the correct edge. Right? But before I do that, what I've found is that it's actually much better to get, make sure you have yellow pieces here and here. So I'm going to do that first. It's still on the same orbit, so it won't matter. So push them out, do the swap, bring them back. Now, you can see that doing that has definitely put that blue piece in there. And it's also swapped that orange piece. This one was already here. I had to swap this as well. So I'm going to do the same thing for this one now to get those swapped. So I'll push, uh, in fact, I'll get the yellows there first. I want a yellow there. I don't have a yellow, so in this case, it's just going to have to be that orange, which I'll put there. Do the swap. That was okay because that orange was dodgy anyway. It had to be fixed later. Okay, so it's definitely put that orange in there. Now I've got to do a swap of this and this. So I'm just going to see where they are. And what I notice is that the orange can be turned around there and swapped with that. So what I can see is that it's definitely going to put another pair out, but I'll be able to fix that. So that's what I meant. It's going to put that blue and yellow out, even though I put the orange in, this blue and yellow is out. But now I know exactly what to do with that. I'll put a couple of yellow pieces down here and I move these out the way, give it a twist, get everything back, and they're all done. Now I should say that all my swaps were like that. If I had swaps like that, then I wouldn't be turning this down, I'd be turning that down. And I wouldn't be turning this up, I'd be turning that up. So as long as you follow that little routine, you'll be fine. That brings us to the corners. Now, there is still one thing that could happen, and I'll just see if I've got it. I'll look at where the corners are. I've got a yellow, green, red that's got to go there. Yellow, blue, red, it's got to go there. Yellow, blue, orange, um, that's got to go there. Yellow, green, orange, oh, you beauty, it has happened. Okay, this is perfectly reasonable and normal because of the curvy cop, the plus business. And so what I would do first is just place whatever corners I can. And I can see they're going around this way, so the, the routine that I use is just, if I want to place these three, I'm going to turn this one first. So just a little edge piece series there, then turn the third piece, and then undo my edge piece series. And undo that. And what we see is that that has gone into position, that has gone into position. Now this one has already also moved to there. They're in position, and I see now that I have a swap of two corners. Now, this is not something gone wrong from before. This is actually because I have a swap of two triangles as well. And so what I want to do in order to fix this swap of two corners is to grab these two and swap those two little triangles. 
Well, they're in the perfect position because you know I can move this up to there. So I'm going to do that first. Now do a swap of the two reds in the normal fashion. Here we go. Now I'm going to be swapping those two red triangles. Put them all back. Now just start putting all the pieces back and I can see that I've got everything still in its three cycle of its orbit now. So I can go green to there, white to there, orange to there. What else have I got? Um, I've got, I better turn that one. I've got uh, green to orange to yellow. And I've got green to red to yellow. That's done. Now, my corners, you can see a couple of these have come out, but that's okay, I don't mind. I'm just going to now replace the corners. So that's got to go to there. That has to go to there and this one has to come back here. So if I'm doing these three around here, I want to start by turning this one. Then turn my third piece. And undo my third piece. Did I do that correctly? Or did I do something really stupid then? I may have done something really stupid. Let's do it again. Because I need them to cycle again. Hmm. I'm not sure if I just wasn't paying much attention there. That's probably the most logical explanation. They're in the correct positions. That is in the correct position. That is in the correct position. So you'll see now that I've dealt with that swap of two corners. And so the last little stage is to orient the corners. And so I'm looking for two that are next to each other where one has to go anti-clockwise and the other has to go clockwise. Doesn't matter which two I get. Um, They've both got to go anti-clockwise. So what I'll do is just do this one and this one, which has to go clockwise. So I'll just do a setup turn like that. And the routine is very, very simple. Start with the front and go front, right, back, left. Do that three times. Now, once that's done, you can either just now think back, right, front, left three times, or you can turn it around so that you've got the front, but this time you go front, left, back, right. So we, we did go around like that. If I turn it around, now I'm going back around like this three times. Now, what you'll see is that when I put this back, that was my setup move. The two corners that I had up here are magically oriented. So this one again, this is my, which one's my anti-clockwise? This one here, got to go anti, so I've got to get the other one into the back position where it needs to go um, clockwise and repeat. Turn it around and now go left. Again, I did say this was a pretty quick part of the solve, deliberately so, but you can see that the Scooby Kirby, what is it called? Scooby Copter Plus is definitely solved. Hope you can see that is a great puzzle. I've really loved doing this. I've solved it a bunch of times. Really good value for money. Um, great design and great production by MF8. I should say, once you get the corners sorted out, you might get it and it's really stiff, like the Scoob turns are too stiff. You've got to just unscrew couple of the corners, one or two turns, just experiment with it. But fantastic puzzle. Um, thanks for watching.